Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Earlier today I put out a poll asking whether you guys wanted me to do a shorter live stream video with a life update or if you wanted a longer video which is a sit down rambly sort of video and that's what you're getting right now because that one by a landslide. So if you're new to my channel this probably isn't the video to start on because it's going to be a huge mess but I just want to talk to you guys because you guys are my friends and you guys have been wondering where I've been and that is going to be the main question that gets answered in this video. And I kind of already said it in my poll. I said basically I've been overwhelmed and I've been working a lot and that's why there haven't been videos. And that is just putting it lightly. When it comes down to it, I think I'm just really trying to figure out how to be a single mom. And I'm a single mom of a newborn and a toddler with a developmental delay and I'm just trying to figure things out, you know, I'm trying to be the breadwinner, I'm trying to be the solo parent, I'm trying to be a stay-at-home mom and a work-from-home mom and a YouTuber and fit some things that I enjoy in there as well and I'm having a hard time doing all of them. Essentially every day for me right now is just me scrambling, trying to meet everyone's needs. Um, newborns are obviously very needy and he is breastfed 100% of the time because he still won't take a bottle. I got lucky one time and he took a bottle and I'm still trying and I've tried so many different brands but he's still not willing to take a bottle so I'm the only one who can care for him and Stella um, although she... <sighs> Well, we've talked about on my channel how she has some social issues um, with strangers. She's always had an issue, like a stranger danger sort of thing. And she's comfortable with my family, but at the same time, she doesn't really want them to do any of the mommy things for her. Um, so I'm the only one who can pick her up. I'm the only one who can feed her and bathe her and change her diapers. And so I essentially have two very needy children that I'm not complaining about. I'm just saying they're, they're a lot of work. And their schedules don't exactly meet up with each other. So I have the newborn who kind of just makes his own schedule. It's different every day. Maybe he'll take a long nap in the afternoon. Maybe he'll take a bunch of short naps. I'm trying to get him on a schedule. And then Stella recently stopped taking naps in the afternoon, which is when I used to get things done, when they were both sleeping at the same time. But now that doesn't happen anymore because happen anymore because Stella doesn't sleep during the afternoon. I've also talked about in videos how she's been having some sleep issues at night. She's been waking up in the middle of the night and it just so happens that I have the newborn who also doesn't sleep totally through the night. So I'm not really sleeping much at all because I feel like when he's sleeping, she's awake and when she's awake, he's sleeping. Did that make sense? And then we have the breastfeeding issue. Um, it's not really an issue, but um, with my living situation, you guys know I live with my parents. I moved in here after I separated from my husband because basically I was a stay-at-home mom with no bank account of my own before we separated. So all of my YouTube earnings, which was my only source of income when I lived in Texas, was going into our joint account, going towards bills and things as it should. We were, you know, um, working together to get that stuff taken care of, whatnot, whatever. So I left Texas with basically nothing, and I had no choice but to move in with my family, which I don't want to ever sound ungrateful because they did so much for me, basically taking me and my kids in. Um, I don't know if it's a secret or not, but I don't pay rent living with my parents. They just offered me up two bedrooms that they had, they cleaned them up for us, and then we moved all our stuff in. And they even came to Texas and helped us load up a moving van of our stuff to bring here. So completely and utterly grateful. But I do have to let you guys know because I don't want to lie, I don't like living here. It has nothing to do with my family, it just has everything to do with the fact that I I had so much independence before. I had my own house and all of my own stuff that I picked out and it's not even about the stuff but the fact that I spent years kind of formulating like my family home and I had to pick up and leave it and take everything of any importance to me and fit it into a van. And my three bedroom house kind of had to be condensed into what fits in two bedrooms. And that was very hard. But things are very, very chaotic here. I have so much stuff in such little space. Um, things that used to be spread out throughout my entire home, like my dining room where I used to have an art desk. All of my art supplies are now still in a box in my closet. I used to have a much bigger closet for my clothes and I had to get rid of a lot of clothes. I've been selling on Poshmark, I've been selling, um, giving, not giving, but consigning clothes to ThreadUp, you guys have seen. 
Um, I had to get rid of a lot of stuff because I just didn't have the space anymore. And I'm sure you guys have noticed how messy Stella's room is and how messy my room is all the time. It's just because we have more stuff than we have space and we're three people living in two bedrooms. So like, I'm not complaining because I was given this space for free and I don't know what I would have done without it, but it is very disorganized and hard to take care of, I guess. Along with that, it's just, it's difficult being back here because I guess living with my parents, I kind of feel like a child myself. And so I find it difficult to parent my kids while also feeling like a child to my parents, but also like a guest in someone else's home. I don't feel free to like breastfeed wherever I want, so I have to do it behind the closed door of my bedroom. Um, so I also have to decide whether to keep Stella in my room with me when I do that, or like let her roam free around the house and I can't watch her. I feel like I could parent better if I had my own space and privacy. But I've also talked about in videos before how the area that we're living in, although we're it's a very nice area and I feel blessed to be here, it's also an area that I cannot afford on a single mother budget. And I'm doing everything I can to boost my income. I am working, as you guys know, for my family business, which I feel incredibly lucky to have the opportunity to do that because not a lot of single moms can work from home. They have to put their kids in daycare, which is extremely expensive, and then work full time and they miss out on so much with their kids. And I really feel for working moms who have to do that. And so I feel lucky that I can work here. I feel lucky that I have YouTube, which it supplements my income. I feel lucky that I have Etsy where I sell art projects, which is something fun for me to do. I feel like that's my only real escape right now. So I have Etsy income and YouTube income and parents business income, but none of that adds up to the cost of rent in this area. And although I'm saving a lot of money by not renting a place somewhere else and I get to live here, um, it's not enough money that I can say like go buy a house or put a deposit down on a house by myself and along with that even if I moved somewhere else somewhere where I could afford the rent um, I'd obviously be leaving and going farther to go somewhere cheaper and I'd lose the opportunity to work from home and my parents home business so I would lose that but I would also gain more freedom with YouTube because another reason I haven't been posting videos as much is because nobody who lives in my house, my parents, and now my sister who also just moved back in, this house is very full right now, wants to be filmed. So I kind of have to stick to areas of the house where nobody is, like currently Stella's bedroom. I'm sure you guys have noticed I film in very limited spots in the house and you guys usually don't see anyone else here because I usually film when they're not here. So I lose a lot of YouTube opportunity and filming because I live in this space. But I don't want this whole video to be complaining, me complaining about where I'm living. I wanted to throw that out there so that we, why you guys understand why I'm so overwhelmed and why I'm working so hard to move. And I'm setting that goal to hopefully move out of here in 2020. So the overwhelmingness, is that a word? Is that the word I should, the, the feeling of being overwhelmed, I've kind of created for myself, um, trying to hustle while also being um, a good mom. I, I hope I'm being a good mom. I'm trying my best. I'm also trying not to get too caught up in the future. Obviously, like me moving out and getting a house of my own or renting a place is a future goal. And I'm trying not to think too far ahead. I'm trying to like live in the now and actually enjoy my kids while they're young because that's the whole point of being a stay-at-home mom is taking care of my kids and being there for them and being like living in the now. Um, but I also want to enjoy life and not have to work 24-7, if that makes any sense. I told you this video was going to be rambly. But anyway, um, before I moved, I talked about all the reasons why I couldn't wait to move here. And one of the reasons was all the friends that I have here that I left when I moved to Texas. Uh, however, a lot of those friends have moved away. But the friends that I still have here, I was very excited to see. And I found out when moving here really quickly that it's actually not as ideal as I thought. I'm kind of losing my track of thought here. Okay, things might get a little bit more chaotic because Stella just joined us in the room, but where I was going is the friends that I left here are in completely different phases of life. A lot of them, most of them are still unmarried, um, which I'm obviously separated, so that doesn't mean anything. But what I mean is I've been married 
I'm separated and I have two kids already. So I am in the settling down phase of life or trying to get settled down again. Not that I'm trying to find another husband. I just mean I have kids in my own family and I'm trying to do the family thing. And my friends are still living their young mid 20s lives. So although they're very nice, I still love them. I love to see them. It's difficult when I have two kids and they don't really understand. From for me to go anywhere or do anything with the kids takes a lot of planning on my part. Um, you guys know if you follow me on Instagram, I think I also said it in a video before, that for basically the entire month of January, I left the house twice. I took Nick to the airport when he left after the holidays and I went outside the other day because the weather was nice. Oh, I also went to Hobby Lobby with my sister, but I think that was actually in February. So yeah, I left the house twice in January. And that's because just traveling anywhere with a newborn who is exclusively breastfeeding is hard. Traveling somewhere with a toddler with cerebral palsy is hard because I basically have to carry both of them because Stella's not as physically capable as a kid her age usually is especially when walking on snow and ice is involved and stairs to get down to the driveway and we've already talked about this but it's difficult for me to go anywhere so i require a lot of planning and people my age younger people um kind of like to do things a little more willy-nilly i know that makes me sound like an old person using the phrase willy-nilly but you guys understand what i'm saying i think so the only friend that i've kind of ended up with at this point is my younger sister who luckily just moved back in and she's making things a little bit easier for me by um, carrying a kid to the car sometimes and so we're able to go places and do things a little bit more often but you guys understand when i say that like i kind of expected my group of friends and I've ended up kind of just more alone than ever. Even in Texas, I had friends who were also moms and it actually made things really fun and easy for me because they understood and we, we, meet, we meet at three, three o'clock. Um, what time is your kid napping? What time is your kid napping? And you kind of plan things like that. And I'm not saying that all of your friends have to have kids, but it certainly makes things a lot easier. There's also the fact that people my age usually like to hang out at night and I go to bed at like 7.30, 8 p.m. nowadays because my kids like to wake me up at like 5.30. So what else? Um, YouTube. I think we should talk more about YouTube because another reason why I haven't been posting videos as much is because I don't really know the direction of my channel anymore um, or what I want it to be. I think I started off YouTube as like a hobby. I used to film videos of me dyeing my hair. If you've seen my first video ever, it wasn't even meant for like an audience. I think I opened that video by saying, hi Allie, because I, I think I had just moved to Texas at that point. I was in like the first apartment that Nick and I had ever rented. And so my best friend at the time, I think I had just dyed her hair before I left and I was making a video teaching her how to tone blonde hair by herself. I could be wrong, I just remember that that first video was for a friend and not even for YouTube. So that video actually blew up. It has like a million or so views now. And so once I saw that my videos were kind of popular and I had just gotten pregnant at that point, I started doing pregnancy updates with my pregnancy with Stella. Um, so those videos aren't currently up anymore. So if you're looking for those, I don't have the pregnancy updates from that pregnancy anymore because it was really bad quality and I was just really embarrassed watching them back. So those are all since deleted. But then you guys know that my second viral video was a video of me taking care of Stella and her feeding tube, which also went slightly viral and it has like 2 million views or something like that. After that video got big, I got floods of emails and messages and comments at the time telling me how inspirational it was and how I was super mom and I was basically on cloud nine. Um, and the messages that meant the most to me were other moms saying like you helped me so much my daughter has this too my son has this too my son has a feeding tube and seeing where your kid is at this point in life and how she's eating again is so inspirational to me and those messages meant so much that i really wanted to be a video or sorry i wanted to be a channel that helped other moms in my situation and kind of spread awareness. I say spread awareness because a lot of people, I know I didn't even know what a G-tube was or what HIE is. And I didn't even think that birth injury was something that we needed to take into consideration when having babies. I thought it was just, if your pregnancy was healthy, your baby's gonna be healthy. I never even thought about a baby being injured when they're being born. 
So yeah, I thought I was trying to spread awareness. And then you guys know I moved on to more of a family daily vlog sort of thing. Um, I tried to do family style vlogging. It's what I enjoy watching on YouTube, but you guys know that I didn't have a husband that enjoyed being on YouTube. So that was kind of difficult in itself. Obviously we didn't have a, a happy marriage at the time. I told you guys that we had been struggling. And so um, him being in the videos wasn't really an option. And so the videos got kind of weird. I think. I don't know if you guys even notice. I do see some comments sometimes um, saying like, it doesn't even seem like he liked her anyway, which like, you're kind of right, which is why we're separated now. <laughs> Stella just fake laughed with me. So yeah, family vlogging didn't really work out. And I really wanted to move away from doing health updates on Stella for a couple reasons. And I, I think maybe you guys have noticed because I've been asked a lot for updates on her therapy and like her MRI results and all of this stuff. And I, I haven't been trying to be sneaky about it, but I have been trying to avoid it. I have never ever talked about this before, but um, you guys know, from, I've mentioned it a couple times, I have Crohn's disease. And it's something that severely affected me throughout my life. I was hospitalized as a kid and I've gone through a lot of the same things as Stella, um, meaning so many doctor's appointments, so many specialists, tests and medications and all this stuff. And I just felt very vulnerable. And I struggled with my relationship with my mother because I felt like she was oversharing um, things that should have been private for me. And I've never talked about this before. But um, yeah, I used to beg her as like a teenager to stop calling every person in the phone book and telling them all of my personal business, every doctor's appointment, every, just everything was out there and I felt very uncomfortable and I felt like I had no privacy and I really resented her for it for a lot of my life. And I don't ever want that to happen with Stella. I think it's different what I was trying to do because I was trying to help other moms by sharing her condition. Um, but I do think it's a fine line between spreading awareness and trying to be a support to other people and get support for myself because us moms struggle a lot when our kids are sick and oversharing her business and maybe making her feel badly in the future because the internet kind of like holds on to this stuff. Like I'm sharing this with a million, two million people have watched her be fed through her feeding tube. Maybe she never wants it to be known that she had a feeding tube. I don't know what she wants because she's three years old now, but one day she's gonna be older and I don't want her to watch this stuff and be like, mom, too much. Like, why did you share all of my personal stuff on the internet? So I've been trying to not share as much. Along with that, um, I do get a lot of support from other moms whose kids go through the same things as Stella. It's brought me so much comfort and so much just, it's, it's been, I don't, it's been nice having a community. But along with that, I do get people messaging me rude things. Um, people telling me I'm doing everything wrong. I get people telling me, trying to diagnose Stella after I only put her, I only put her in videos for like two minutes at a time. I'm not the type of person who follows their kids around the house with a camera or films them daily or any of that. I don't feel like I share enough for someone to find me on Facebook, on my personal Facebook and try to diagnose her with something and tell me I need to do this. I need to get her in this program. I need to get a handicap sticker for my car. I need to do this and this and this. And sometimes it's advice and it's nice and it's things I don't know. And sometimes it's people telling me that things that I'm already doing or things that they don't see or they're trying to tell me completely different things from what her doctors tell me. And it's just, it's overwhelming and sometimes honestly it's annoying. So that is why you guys don't hear so much about Stella's health anymore. Um, but that also has its downfalls because if I don't talk about her cerebral palsy and her the special needs that she has, um, people think that she's a completely normal neurotypical kid and they judge me as a parent because she's not speaking properly and all this stuff because, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So. It's hard for me to try and find the amount of things I want to share and the things that I want to keep private and find like the perfect in between, I guess. So that's kind of where I'm struggling with YouTube. I've always enjoyed making these videos. I enjoy talking to so many of you. I never ever intended for my channel to get this big and I don't even have that big of a channel. 53, 
53,000 subscribers is kind of like a drop in the bucket when it comes to YouTube. YouTubers who have like a billion subscribers, a couple million subscribers, 100,000s of subscribers. I never meant for this to be a job. This sounds like I'm quitting YouTube. I'm not. I'm just kind of struggling and trying to share with you um, my thoughts on my channel and maybe ask you for help because I want, I want to find a more clear direction of where to go from here. I want to keep making videos. I want to have this stuff to look back on, even though my life isn't exactly where I want it right now. One day, hopefully it will be, and I want to look back on this and be like, we came so far and we did it by ourselves. But I don't know. You guys have to let me know. If you want to keep watching my channel, what is it that you want to see? Some people are going to be mad that I don't want to share everything anymore. Um, I never really did share everything to begin with. For the record because some people do feel like they know everything about me and they message me and let me know that and they feel entitled to every detail of everything and I'm not gonna start I'm not gonna start ranting but that stuff does happen <sighs> but I don't know what I'm doing and I'm overwhelmed and that's what I wanted to share with you guys but I miss you I miss editing I miss doing the fun stuff um, I also miss having my own home and I guess I'm homesick and I'm lonely but at the same time I want to be alone and I just I'm just keeping it together right now also my lips look really pink because I'm drinking pink juice so miss you guys um, I'm probably gonna do that thing where I post the thumbnail picture and let you comment under it so we can kind of talk about what's happening um, but I think I touched on all of the things that are currently hurting my soul at the point at this point in time and I've talked about why I haven't been posting videos and what I've been up to and um yeah so thank you guys so much for watching thank you for listening to me ramble hopefully I didn't offend anyone in this video it's so hard to not offend people on the internet which is another issue that I'm currently having but anyway thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one